everybody, it's Pete from Spawn Fly Fish. You might also know me as Blue River Flies. And today we're going to try to tie a little minnow pattern that I designed to replicate the stickleback minnow. So we're going to start with the uh, Arex NS122. This is a size 4. And I'm just going to be using some uni white 6 aught thread. So let's get it started here. Nothing crazy. And what we're going to be working on here, we're going to take this thread right back to where where it just starts to curve, which ends up being just above the barb of the hook. Make just a little bit of a bump right there. So a lot of this minnow is based off of mallard feathers. And what I've got are, are three sizes in ascending order. So this I'd consider the first, the second, and then the longest being the third, which would be at the head as we finish. And to prep this, we're going to be tying it in by the tip. So we'll grab it by the tip here and just work the feathers down. I've got a cup of water, so I'm going to get my fingers wet and bring all those fibers down. When I've got it fairly well matched up on both sides, just go ahead and clip off most of that. And, and you can get cute with this and take off some of these little fibers, but we're just going to tie it right in so it won't matter. And I'm going to be tying it with the concave side down against the hook. i got one stray fiber here I don't like. That'll be right. So convex on top, concave facing the hook. Just get that started. And we're going to line up our, our last little bit there right with our last thread wraps and then we'll just tie it all back down any loose fibers you can cut them off or rip them off if you need to get our thread out of the way now here's what I like to do on this is I'm going to again get the fibers really wet and bring them toward each other for both sides and, and the key to this for me is I, I don't want a big splay of, of fibers going around the hook I want them to lay rather flat as they turn and the way I do this is I'm going to make this first wrap almost in a, away from it and back and as I do this what will happen is it will allow me to, to put the quill flat against the hook as compared to on its side and this will let the fibers lay down in a much flatter fashion because especially for the stickleback minnow it, it's not a very big profiled minnow and, and this will help be emulate it before it even gets in the water and it's it's a good idea to keep that in mind if you're tying early season flies because a lot of the young fry are, are very slim and small so again the whole time if, if you can keep your fingers wet and keep the fibers wet this will go a lot easier and as you can see here on this wrap it's a little easier to see the quill is is quite flat against the hook so that's three four wraps maybe one more what we don't want to get into is any of that fluffy stuff at the end of the feather. Bring my thread back down and on this I'm going to bring the, th the feather up and just separate right there. Make a nice little V and tie off. And as you can see that the quill wants to turn. We're not going to let it. Little finger control there. Three, four wraps just to secure. And get these little loose fibers out of there and go ahead and make a neat cut. Finish off that little bit that we dropped there and we're good. And you can see as this dries out it'll be a little bit bigger profile but not a whole lot. That's just about right. So now we're going to tie in some wire and for this I'm just using some brassy sized red wire and on there all the way back and for cleanliness of your flies make sure you always go back to where that tie off of your previous material was make sure that wire is really secured and now we're going to tie in some sparkly chenille in white pearl whatever chenille you want to use is, is probably okay I just like the little bit of glimmer from the sparkle here and again, tie it all the way back to our previous tie-in. Keep the fly nice and neat. Make sure it's secured. 
and then advance your thread up to the hook eye. Nothing, nothing crazy on this fly. So we'll just begin wrapping our chenille and touching wraps toward the front. If you lose one, just undo it, come back, make sure it's all nice and secure. So this is going to be our last wrap, so we don't want to crowd the hook eye. Tie off enough to make sure that's secured. Clean cut. Get rid of these loose fibers and just to make sure your tie down is good. Alright, so now we're going to counter wrap or go the other direction with our wire, evenly spaced. And if you just wiggle a little as you go, it'll get down between some of those fibers and secure the chenille a little bit better to the hook. So we got one more wrap here and then we'll tie off our wire. And again, probably four, three, four wraps, whatever you feel comfortable with. Now, on the wire itself, I like to cut it close, but not so close that I can't just, with my thumbnail, just push that little bit of wire back. And now, as I wrap that over, there's no way that wire can come undone unless something really toothy is, is playing with it. That's pretty good. Now we're going to do a little whip finish here. And making sure each wrap goes toward the hook eye. And that's what makes the strength of the whip finish. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Make a nice clean cut. And just a little bit of head cement on there. Now this is going to be an articulated fly and there's there's probably a million ways to attach a rear hook to a shank or to another hook and for this one we're going to be attaching it to a shank, a 35 millimeter shank. Once we've got our feathers kind of played out there, get the fibers on both sides where they look nice, and we're good. Okay, so for this I'm going to attach this, I'm just going to give this time to dry a little bit, with some 50 pound spider wire. And as a little bit of an attractor, I'm going to add a bead, a red 6 aught craft bead. So for now, let's just get rid of this guy. We'll come back to him. So here's our, our shank. I'll loosen that just a touch. I'm not sure. If you can move it, you're not ready, so we'll get this little snug here. There we go. So now let's get this, this shank secured. So what we don't want is, is any movement or play. You don't want the shank tied to one side or the other. You want it right on top. We'll just start our thread again. Now you can use uh, pliers, you know, some strong tweezers, whatever you need. To, to secure that, but as you go, I think just pushing down with your, your index finger, thumb or thumbnail, whatever, and get that started. Now I really like to make sure these are secured. Last thing you want is for something in the structure of the, the base of your fly to come undone when that's the easiest thing you can control. And I do want to add some weight to this, so I'm going to start with some 0.035 non-lead wire and what I'm going to do is, is start here where the gap is or, or where the under part of the shank meets up and just again to, to make a nice neat profile that's that's constant throughout the fly so if you can imagine after you cut there's one two three four six, eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and I think fifteen will do it and I've tied a lot of these so I can tell you a quarter inch or, or so is, is the amount of room I'm looking for between the last wrap and the beginning of the shank eye here. And you'll see why later as we go to apply our, our spawn head. And give that a nice clean cut and cut the rear as well. 
So now with a curved part of a, this is actually a cuticle scissor because we don't, we won't want to use our, our good scissors which would just become dull in no time. We're going to round that over with the curved portion and make sure there's no rough edges there. And then we'll, we'll turn it over and do the same at the rear and you can see where this finishes matches up with the end of the rear portion of that or bottom portion of the shank. So now as I come up, if I, if I start putting thread wraps right in between the gaps here, I'm going to spread these apart and I don't, I don't, <coughs> excuse me, I don't want to do that. So we're going to go at an angle here, just get it up quickly, not a whole lot of pressure yet, and then the opposite direction at a 45. So now I've got one pass up and back, we're going to do that again, just to slightly secure those wraps down. And now I can come in with a little more pressure and a little bit more uh, straight on with the gaps of the thread or the, the wire wraps. But before I get too far, I'm also going to add in some the .025 and depending on how heavy you want this, that would determine where you're going to start your wraps here. And all I want to do is give myself um, a couple of extra wraps to make sure that one, this is secured and two, I, I like these heavy in the front so that they have a little bit of a diving action and each wrap of this is going in between the wraps of the .035 and just to make sure it's all finished off here I'm going to go three wraps in front of our .035 and this will do two things where the .035 ends is where I'm going to stop my chenille and then these extra few are going to help me gauge what, when I put the head on and it'll, it'll help with my build up of materials to give something to secure the head onto sure you curve that under nicely and the rear all right so same thing with the thread get an angle going get in front of them got just a little bit of a edge there we don't need and then come back in the opposite 45 degree angle and once more and come back now we can start putting a little more pressure and getting some thread wraps in between each wrap of the wire. All right. So now, just as an example, you can see the space that we need to fill here. And it's not quite full, but you have to imagine we're going to have chenille and another feather wrapped on here, and it should snug up just fine. So now we're gonna take our, our 50 pound spider wire and you could do this before the thread wraps if you want. Um, I really haven't noticed that it, it makes too much difference as far as the hook pulling out or any of that good stuff. Okay, so let's take our, our tail here. And there's a, there, like I said, there's a million ways to attach this. I want to show you one of my favorite ways for for this, and it's a little different than what you're probably accustomed to. So I'm going to give myself plenty of room. I've doubled over the, the 50 pound spider wire and keeping your lines so left on the left, right on the right. I'm going to go on the center, however, on top of the shank and get a few of these wraps pulling that, that spider wire down into the gap of the non-lead wire. I'm going to turn those end pieces back over and just bring them back down. And this one's sure that no matter what, this isn't going to pull out uh, if, if a fish gets really aggressive on that hook. Rather secure it overly done versus not quite enough. All right. So now first thing first, we're going to slip our bead our 50 pound spider wire and now we'll add the hook and I'm just going to tie this hook point down hopefully you can see some of this alright and the reason I do it this way is you can see now I can actually take the spider wire uh, once again through the 
bead and this really allows that hook to move freely in the back and I want it to have just a little bit of room so that that bead after it's tied down still sits behind the the rear section of that shank so right about there and I'm going to secure it on top again make sure our spacing is still okay it hasn't moved too much that's good like so now where this tag end is for our, our spider wire I'm just going to come into the loop and make a cut and separate both ends out and now on the sides I'm going to bring that back once again doubling it over just another way to secure and make sure you're not going to have a fish rip the hook off of your shank I'm going to trim that just a touch on each of these ends Now you can see that it does add just a little little bit of bulk, but it, it's still not going to be enough to affect. Now this is a, a sniper head from Spawn, and it, you can see we still have too much room, but it's, it's getting a little build up where it's starting to stop it there. So we're going to be just about right, I think. At this point, I'm going to add some head cement and let it soak through not only the spider wire but also the wraps of thread and these will work their way down to the shank itself and keep the whole thing nice and secure and don't be shy with, with the head cement it's, you really cannot overdo it better safe than sorry. Right. Move around evenly and let it dry. While we're letting that dry, let's get our second feather, which is just a little bit longer than our first. And find a good stopping point here. Get your fingers wet and bring all the fibers down toward the base of the feather. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect on either side. Just get some of that loose fluff out of there if we can. Okay, so again, now this is our, our starting point. I'm going to get rid of not that much. And again, you could cut some of these fibers, but it's not really a necessity. And then we're going to wrap it the same way we wrapped the first one. And you can see our tie-in point. And again, concave side toward the shank and you can see where our gap is I'm going to tie right to it and, and these first few wraps aren't real real strong just a guide to get our, our feather lined up where we want it and also if you've made them with too much pressure you risk the um, you risk breaking your your tip of the feather here all right, and again, we're, we're looking for probably four to five wraps of this feather. So we'll get our fingers wet and bring those fibers together as much as we can. Meeting at the middle there. And again, if you started wrapping on the side, you can see how much these would splay out. But what we're going to do is take the feather back and then come around underneath. And as we come up, being mindful that we're trying to keep the bottom side of that quill flat against our shank. And if you can do that, you should get a, a much smaller, denser profile. I've got a couple fibers trapped here. There we go. And bring the feathers or the fibers together. And on this one you can see a little easier that the quill is, the concave side of the quill itself is, is actually making contact with the shank. Uh, we do want these fibers on this side just to keep it neat. Alright, so maybe one more wrap here and 
this point when we come up we'll separate our fibers there's not much left of this feather so it'll be fairly even there we go and secure catch that a couple times and then you're good and I'm going to bring it right back down over the last wrap of that quill just a touch good cut any stray fibers go ahead and just trim those out as you feel One good thing you can do at this point too is, is go ahead and, and throw in a whip finish if you want. It's, it's really not going to make a, a lot of difference in this, unless you have issues with your, your thread control. I just want to splay these fibers out on the side they should be on as much as possible. So now we've covered that, that connection fairly well. We still have the, the red bead showing through as a little hot spot there never hurts to have an extra attractant. Alright. So now we're ready for a repeat of what we did on the tail section. And so we're going to start with some of our red wire. I'm going to bring the thread up and start it about halfway down the shank. Top. And again, all the way back to our tie off of the feather. Make sure you secure that, that wire down nice and tight. And again, followed by some chenille. Just, you can remove just a few of these fibers like that between your thumb and finger and give yourself a nice starting point instead of fighting that fiber and getting a little bit of a bump there. And secure back, our tie off, and good. So I'm going to uh, stop this chenille just in front of this, this bump here where we, we finished our 0.035 wire. So let's just wrap this. Again, touching wraps. You, you'll quickly be able to see if it's tight enough or not. And you can, again, use any type of chenille. So you can see this will bring us right on top, and that's exactly where I want it. I'm going to bring my thread back to that spot. And go ahead and catch the shinio. Wiggle it just a little bit, make sure that thread is seating all the way down against the core of that skein. Right. Tidy up. And now we are ready for our wire. And again, we're going to counter wrap. And so a little wiggle as we go just to seat it down a little bit better and it also prevents from trapping the outer edges of some of those fibers of, from your chenille. And this would normally be the tie-off spot but I'm going to bring it once around again just to make sure there's no slipping because of that hump. Alright, got four and five securing wraps there. And again, using a designated wire scissor. And I've got a little edge back here on the reverse side. Make sure that's crimped down. Again, to prevent that wire from pulling out just a little bit more. All right. And now we are on to our last element, which is the third feather. And you can see this is quite a bit bigger than than the last and definitely much larger than the first. And a good way to check this is to see if these fibers as they wrap are going to be long enough to cover the body and overlap just a touch onto your previous feather. Wet fingers. Pull these fibers down. You don't need a lot of pressure on here. The moisture on your fingers is, is really the key to getting these fibers to, to stay down and give you a little bit more control. Cut and trim just a touch on that. And again, concave against your shank. And you can see maybe where the feather stops here where I've, I've trimmed it and that's going to tie in with our tie off spot. And you can see I'm going to have to cut some of these 
fiber end. Same thing as the last two feathers. We're going to bring the fibers together toward the concave side. And begin our wrapping. Again, that, that little movement instead of going on the side, bring your fibers together, come around and under. And this will hopefully line up the underside of that quill. And if it, there we go. If it gives you trouble, just be patient. It's it's a little different than just, you know, the typical wrapping of the, a feather to the shank. But it does produce a neat effect of, of keeping it slim to your, your body. There we go. You're essentially trapping one side of, of the fibers, or the feather. And that's about our last wrap right there. Bring these feathers, the fibers up from both sides. Create a nice clean tie-off. these fibers I am going to make sure they come up otherwise they'll go the wrong direction as we tie off. Okay. So you can see that the quill is convex side or concave side rather to the, the shank. There's two. I'm just tidy this up. Once it's secured, make a good clean cut here on the quill. And finish wrapping off. Snug that up back as, as much as you need to and again get your fingers wet and just slick these fibers back and, and they'll stay out of your way now and as you, you go for your whip finish. Alright, and now two whip finishes. I like five or even six wraps there. And let's pull it snug and our second wrap. Yeah. Here's thread, and we're ready for a little head cement to finish this off. Make sure you, you coat all the way around that thread, but what you want to avoid is getting any of that head cement in the fibers of the feather, because it will mat it down and then in a way that's not very attractive. Alright, there we go. So now, I would typically let that dry a little bit. Let's just see how our, our sniper head fits now that we've got that chenille and everything else backed and voila. So if, if that fits nicely with no, no more adjustments, now we're going to grab some super glue. And for this, I prefer the, the gel myself. There's, again, so many options you can use. Um, liquid fusion is another option that works really, really well. But get all these fibers exactly where you want them, because after you've put this on, you're not going to be able to adjust it very much. And I'm just going to put a few dots of this gel in the key spots of where I want to make contact with the head and namely the sides. And you can see it doesn't take a whole lot. And then we'll go ahead and carefully slip that on. That's it, we're snugged up. And we have a slim bodied, uh, pretty versatile minnow pattern. And again, for sticklebacks, this, this pattern is, is just about spot on. And that's it. So happy tying. Hope you have fun with this pattern. Thanks for tuning in to Spawn. We'll see you next time.